Hi, my name is James Griffiths. Welcome back to the channel for a vinyl update. First one for a long time. Uh, before Christmas, I promised that I'd be back soon to show you some records uh, that I had for Christmas, and then I uh, just got waylaid. One thing led to another. So anyway, I'm back now. I'm going to show you a few things. I'm going to show you uh, a series of classic British pop rock albums. Uh, these are just some of the things I've collected since Christmas, uh, or before Christmas in fact, but um, I thought I'd group them together. So these are all British pop rock albums, nothing wildly uh, exciting or off the beaten track, just things that I didn't have in the collection, so um, uh, I do now. So let's see what we've got. So the first one is Madness, One Step Beyond, their debut album I think. And I bought this from um, a shop in Wrexham called Moonlight Records, which I've talked about a few times now on my channel. It's a shop that I used to go to years ago when I was a teenager, and I've uh, started going there again. This is one of several records that I had for Christmas. I went in there and bought myself, I think it was four records, and gave them to my mother to <laughs> wrap and give to me for Christmas. So uh, nice to get this into the collection. Uh, just never owned it back in the day. You know, I used to buy Madness singles, I had the Rise and Fall album, and uh, Absolute Madness as well, but just never had this one. My Girl, One Step Beyond, uh, The Prince. This is obviously Madness in their earliest uh, Scar incarnation. And there's the inner. Uh, so yeah, great to get. Some stiff records, of course, and uh, I think this one has a custom label. Yep. So, great black and white uh, design. Really nice condition. This one was in the box of new arrivals. Uh, so, um, I think it was I think it was about a tenner. Obviously I'd pay less if I could be bothered to go to a car boot sale, but uh, I can't, so anyway, there we go. <laughs> um, now we're going to jump to a different place, Acorn Antiques, which is just on the outskirts of Wrexham. I don't remember if it was the same day or a different day. It's quite a good little place actually, uh, just a classic antiques uh, dealers, you get some real bargains in there, but then you know it's fairly random. I got a bunch of records in there, and um, I think I think each of them came to about three pounds. It was quite a big, it was quite a big wadge of stuff that I got. Uh, Joe Jackson, I'm the man, was among them. Now this is not his debut album, I don't think, is it? Uh, that was Get Sharp. This is probably his second album, and again, just not one that I um, ever bought back in the day. This is the one that's got it's different for girls on it on your radio. Great uh, attitude -y singer singer-songwriter from the glory days of um, British pop music on a and I do have another Joe Jackson album which um, I have bought online. I'll show that maybe in the next update. So that was nice to get. Um, okay, so we're going to we're sort of zigzagging around now. We're back to Moonlight Records again. This is another of the Christmas records. Um, yeah, I couldn't leave this one behind. This was this is a reissue. I'm not quite sure when the reissue came out. It was in the shop reduced from £15 to a tenner, and it was in really good condition. So I thought I would grab a copy of Setting Suns by The Jam, which is maybe their third or fourth album. Not an easy band to collect. Um, you certainly very rarely see their original records um, around the place. I've got... Um, I've got a reissue of all mod cons. I've got an original copy of um, Sound Effects, but um, this is one I'd never seen before. I uh, never heard it before, actually. I wasn't a big jam fan back in the day, but uh, really been enjoying this album. This has got uh, Eaton Rifles on it, but the whole album sounds tremendous. Really angry, really great guitar sound, and incredibly bleak lyrics. Very working class, but bleak. Um, I'd never really sort of pegged. Weller was a bleak, a bleak artist. I kind of saw him as an angry one, and I guess it is a sort of angriness mixed with bleakness. But uh, great lyrics, great storyteller, and obviously wonderful musicianship from the other two guys. So um, I couldn't leave that behind really for a tenor, jam, and setting suns. Back to Acorn Antiques now. <laughs> I'm not quite sure why I didn't put these into a better order, so we didn't need to keep jumping around. But let's face it, who cares where I bought them from? You don't care. And I can barely remember myself, but um, Funboy 3, <clears throat> waiting, really chuffed to get this. This really made my day. I've been looking for a copy of this for a long time. I think it was their second album. I have the first one on vinyl, which is easier to find. This one, 
not so easy. I've had it on CD for many years, <clears throat> and um, this is this, um, this is the album that's produced by David Byrne. We've got Terry Hall here, who passed away a few years ago. Obviously, there were an outshoot from um, the specials, but this is a great album. It's got some really tremendous things on it. Um, we're having all the fun. May have been the single. I'm not entirely sure, but that's a great song. Uh, the Tunnel of Love, um, just a great album, great, great songwriting and uh, nice uh, crisp production from um, David Byrne and uh, this is a green chrysalis. Really made my day to get it and it was uh, it came with that Wodger Records which I think, like I said, it was £3 each at the most. So great to get that. And then I think this was from the same hall, staying again at Acorn Antiques, a band that I do collect, but I see their records so infrequently, hardly ever. Um, I can't even I can't even recall now when when I found the last album by them. But um, this was just sat there waiting for me to grab it. The Kinks and State of Confusion, one of the '80s Arista albums, possibly the best one actually. Um, I've always been fond of the album Word of Mouth. That's got some great stuff on it. I can't remember if this comes before or after that one, but um, this is not a bad album at all. Um, it's got um, Come Dancing on it, I suppose, was the big hit off this, but uh, Young Conservatives on side two is a really funny song. <laughs> Very acerbic. Um, and, um, yeah, great, just great to find in a... You know, the Arista years are not necessarily um, the most well-loved era of the Kinks, but um, I really enjoyed that. I've known the album for years, but uh, good to get a vinyl copy of it. So there we go, the Kinks, the Kinks, State of Confusion. And this one, still staying in Acorn Antiques. Again, a record that um, I very rarely see around. If I do, it's, it's pricey or it's not in great condition. This is a really nice copy. Uh, the Who by Numbers, so um, with the brilliant um, John Entwistle, Join the Dots album artwork. Somebody, somebody here on YouTube, I forget who it is now, somebody bought two copies of it in order to actually do the drawing. I can't remember who it was. Uh, if it's you, get in touch. <laughs> um, yeah, so this is an album that I've had on CD for years and years. Uh, Slip Kid, the opening track, great stuff. Squeezebox, the third song on side one. I used to play that in a band that I was in. Um, it's just, it's a bit of a boozy song, but it's good fun. Um, How Many Friends, towards the end of side two, has got, a, it's got some really, it's got some really bleak lyrics again, talking about Paul Weller. Um, you know, Ray Davis, Paul Weller, Ray, uh, Ray Townsend, Pete Townsend, they all had a bit of a a bleak thing going on in their lyrics, didn't they? Uh, that sort of British rainy day outlook, which all three of them had uh, in different ways. But uh, anyway, rambling on. Great to get. Red Polydor. Don't find two albums very often, so um, that was another goodie. And we're still staying in Acorn Antiques. Now this one, this one is um, a fame reissue, which is a bit of a shame. It's a record I've been looking for literally ever since I was a kid. Um, one of a couple of sort of classic hard rock albums that I've never been able to find. Uh, extremely well-known one, Deep Purple in Rock. The other one that I've been looking for for Donkey's Years is Heaven and Hell by Black Sabbath, and that one as well never turns up. So this is a fame reissue, so this won't be impressing uh, Chris at the Vinyl Orchard, who's got many, many copies of this record, all kinds of fantastic versions of it, but uh, this is my copy, <laughs> a fame reissue. Um, yeah. Fame. Not not a marvelous um, not a marvelous version to have, I suppose, but um, it's great to have it. Speed King and um, Bloodsucker, um, just a totally seminal album. This and Heaven and Hell by Black Sabbath were in the collection of my cousin Mark. And I've spoken about that collection a few times over the years. One of the first, if not the first, great record collection I ever saw when I was a kid. It was a hard rock collection mainly and I can remember sat in his room just you know flicking through seeing the cover for this and the cover for Heaven and Hell. It's, it, I mean that was literally when I was about 10 or 11 years old and finally got a copy of it, albeit the fame reissue. And finally in a way this is the pick of the bunch. Now this is actually Oxfam in Lancaster uh, which was only uh, I think I bought this earlier this week or maybe last week. 
and it was a total surprise to find it. Not a record that uh, I've ever seen in the wild before. You can buy a reissue of it now. I've checked. You can get the reissue of it for, I think, you know, £23. But this is an original copy on Rough Trade. And um, I got this for, I think it was... I think it was £15. This is the Raincoats, who uh, were a British post-punk bang, really, from London. Um, and... Uh, I've had this on CD for many years, and uh, I left my CD of it out in the rain a few years ago, and it, it got drenched and the cover got spoilt, and that's always niggled me, and I've always been meaning to replace the CD, and it's amazing now to think I've actually got a vinyl copy of it. Um, this is produced by Jeff Travis, uh, who was the founder of Rough Trade, and um, it's this album has got a classic post-punk thing, quite rackety, I um, think the slits, uh, but a slightly different kind of sound, I suppose. Just one of those John Peel bands. When you put the stylus on the record, you're immediately transported back to those late 70s John Peel sessions. You know, slightly amateurish, um, trying to play music which is slightly beyond their capabilities, but sort of making a glorious hash of it, really. Um, quite punky, a little bit reggae-ish at times, but very original sounding. You know, the drummer sounds almost like she's influenced by um, John French from the Captain Beefheart band, you know, the Magic Band. Um, very original, very quirky, not very well produced, it's got to be said. You know, sonically, this record leaves something to be desired, but um, it was just a great, great thing to find. And it's music that puts a smile on your face, really. Once you, you know, once you get past the fact that it's not very well recorded and they sort of can't play their instruments, there's a sort of quirkiness to it. And, uh, yeah, it's always nice to find things on Rough Trade. I've got a few albums now, originals on Rough Trade, and, you know, they don't come up very often. And um, it's nice to find an original copy with a bit of ring wear on it rather than a horrible, soulless um, reissue. So... Uh, there we go, the raincoats, which is uh, da -da, just called the raincoats. Did I call it the rain parade earlier? If I did, it's not. It's the raincoats. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, there we go. That will do for now. I've got some other records to show. I've got loads of records to show, actually. And um, I'll try to come back before too much longer and uh, show you some of the other things I've got. But in the meantime, hope you enjoyed the update, and I'll see you soon. Passionate child, red with anger.